there, this is Anthony Metivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com. We are starting a live replay on, well it's live now, but we're trying to uh, revive a stream that just got broken. So if you're here, hit the thumbs up, let me know in the chat how you're doing. I got the Cheshire Cat back, he's not angry, hopefully nobody else is angry, and uh, hopefully we can get our uh, groove going back on. I don't know, it almost seems like the same stream here, um, but it's working again. So. Thanks for any uh, patience you're able to extend uh, wherever you are in the world. And we have some questions that we came in. Harvinder's here, Harvinder's back. Thanks for letting me know, Harvinder. And uh, just gonna see how it looks on my end here. Physical's back, <laughs> oh yeah, welcome back to you as well. Thanks for your patience. What a pain in the butt uh, when that happens. But you know what? Still a beautiful, beautiful, wonderful, you know, internet that we have. So we were on the cards thing, and then Time Lord was asking about the using cars for memory palaces. And so I just want to give a, a few minutes to see if Time Lord and Sebastian and uh, uh, what was uh, Dota, if they're going to come back um, and answer their questions with them here. Uh, <laughs> kind of a pain in the butt that that broke off as it did, but I think it was better to try and restore the video. What do you think? Okay, so for those of you watching this replay, uh, and you're totally confused, this is again Anthony Metivier from MagneticMaryMethod.com. We're going to talk about Halloween brain exercise, memory palace exercise that creates more memory palaces for you so that you can actually get the benefits of spatial memory. Julie's here from California. Hey, Julie, thanks for saying hello. Great to see you. And... Uh, one of the, uh, the things to, to consider is that if you aren't creating and using memory palaces and you're struggling with these techniques is to always create more. And make sure you're creating them in a well-formed manner. This is really, really, really important. Um, because if they're not well-formed, then you're not going to get the best out of them. You're not going to hit the ground running. It's just, it's just not going to work as well as it could. So that's really important. That's why, you know, training in getting proper memory palace creation going for you is really really key and when you do it in the in the best possible way you reduce the cognitive overwhelm and that best possible way comes through practice and it comes through actually testing what you're doing uh, against the results that you're looking for so Leah's here, Leo's here hello Leo great for uh, having you here Garrett's back in Chicago, Illinois, or in Illinois, I don't think you said Chicago, <laughs> but great to see you again. Thanks for uh, being here, everybody. Hit the thumbs up. Uh, strange now that I'm seeing so many people commenting and uh, all the, everything's weird. You know, guys, YouTube broke down last week, apparently. It was down for three weeks, or sorry, three hours, and uh, there's a lot going on, so uh, just uh, extend your patience and understanding to, to YouTube and to, and to myself. Um, because there's obviously some some wacky things going on last week. I don't know what they are, but I've heard uh, I've heard everything from conspiracy theories to uh, what just sounds like life on the internet. <laughs> so Will is here, William from Missouri. Thanks for saying hello, Will. KSF is here. James is back. All right, James. So James, you said you were in Canada. I didn't realize that. Um, or if I did, I didn't uh, put it in a memory palace. But that is uh, that is great to to know. Uh, always love to meet a fellow Canadian, assuming that uh, you are Canadian and not just in Canada. But uh, did you know that by the law in uh, in the Constitution, if you're in Canada, you are de facto a Canadian, um, at least in terms of the, the 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 human rights that are afforded people within the border within the country. In any case, if you're just joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing, what you're thinking. If you're not subscribed to this channel, get subscribed so we can help you improve your memory and have an amazing, amazing experience learning any language, names, numbers, programming, whatever it is that you want to learn faster and better without forgetting stuff, that's what we do. That's how, what we uh, spend all our good time and energy on, uh, helping people do. And uh, so KSF is in Thailand. Wow, that's cool. Must be an amazing place to be. All right, so, um, where were we? So Time Lord was asking, I don't know if Time Lord is here, uh, please uh, let me know if you are back.
because I don't want you to miss the answer to your question. But uh, well, let's catch up with KSF's question here on programming faster before that I uh, give Time Lord and Dota and Sebastian a chance to, to get back. Time Lord's here, okay, so we'll do that and uh, then we'll get to programming. So I, did, I lost your question, but what I saw there is you were talking about th something about blurring between the seats in the cars. And uh, so there's a couple of things there. It may be that your level of um, practice is not established to the extent that that small amount of space is really going to to do the the heavy lifting that it that it you know could be doing if you had more spatial memory uh, practice with larger spaces. So try in a bigger memory palace and try. Uh, figuring out different versions of memory palaces and, and make sure your journey is correct in the car because the problem is is a correct journey in a place that's smaller than you have experience with can be an issue um, or an incorrect journey in a place that's way more than sufficiently large can be a problem so we always got to just see where we're at in the practice if you want to add more details to your question I was kind of rushing through it there but basically that car journey has to be so super precise and the other thing too to understand is that space really matters relative to the nature of the information so this is really really important uh, to, to think about things for information so any card you know is not the card this is Dashiell Hammett, who is significantly bigger than a card, Six of Spades. So we're not actually placing the uh, <laughs> Six of Spades in the car, we're placing Dashiell Hammett there, right? Um, and to take another one, well, that's another spade, but Three of Spades is, is, you know, is a number, well, this is also a number of possible things, dash or dish. So it's often Dashiell Hammett with a dish. Now, if this was the next card, it would be Dashiell Hammett throwing a dish at the Hoover Dam, which would then be sucked up by the Hoover vacuum with J. Edgar Hoover, right? Because we're at every single opportunity, we're um, compounding the value of every image. And I don't think of the PAO. Uh, I, I try to avoid the, the traditional competitive term PAO in my practice because I'm working on a magnetic level and so it's much more flexible than that. But you've got to think about the space considerations of the imagery. And some people really can't make that as small in the beginning as it would need to be in a cupboard or in a car or whatever. Um, but you could, you could work on that, you could practice it, which is sort of lends itself to Harvinder's question from the previous stream, which I again regret got cut off. but. Uh, Thank you for your uh, patience with that, and I hope that's uh, helping you, uh, Time Lord. Please add any more um, relationships to, or, or angles to your question, so we can uh, extend that if you have any uh, any issues uh, that, or it's not it's not clear. But even even to to do a bit of exercise in your mind without a memory palace from time to time can be quite useful. It just depends on the outcome that you're wanting to do. So in what I was just saying, it was uh, six of spades and then three of spades and then I saw four of diamonds, I think. So six of spades, three of spades, four of diamonds, right? And I, you know, I just sort of loosely made these images in a hypothetical theoretical car which is a good exercise to do. I wouldn't do it if they could, you know, the, uh, <laughs> the pressure was on, but it is like a good exercise to do from time to time. So consider, consider just playing around with it um, and seeing if you can get more out of less and less out of more. And when you get less out of more, then try and reverse it and try to get more out of less or try to get more out of a sufficient uh, size of memory palace and so forth. There's just, each person needs to find their way. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful path that is as direct as you want to make it through showing up and doing, running the experiments in the laboratory of your own mind, which is what you're going to do anyway. So you might as well do it with cheerful joy and a smile on your face 
by diving in and, and, and just getting it done. And so that's one of the reasons why that, you know, we're now adding an accountability option for people in the Magnetic Mary Method Masterclass. And if you're interested in joining us in the dojo, go to magneticmarymethod.com forward slash H, H for Halloween. And uh, well, let's go through these questions and we'll get to the Halloween exercise before we go. Hopefully we won't be cut off again. So let's see here. We had KSF's question about programming, which, uh, you know, basically you got to start with what is it in computer programming that you need to memorize? Is it a library of functions? Is it a number of shortcut codes or whatever? Um, a lot of these softwares, they just, you know, you type a letter and it'll fill in whatever it is that you might be searching for. So what is the thing in programming that you actually need to memorize? And what would be the highest benefit that you could get from memorizing this or that that thing? Um, I really always need to just know more about what each individual programmer needs because it really does matter. It, it matters a great deal because if you don't have clarity around what exactly needs to be memorized, you have a very difficult time actually creating the Memory Palace network that's going to support that learning goal or at least it's more difficult than it needs to be so definitely 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 get some clarity around what we're talking about when we're talking about programming otherwise we're we've got a losing gambit um, but that said if you know how to memorize words and you know how to memorize numbers you'll hit the ground running because that's pretty much what we're dealing with when we have uh, numbers and uh, words <laughs> in programming, or that's what programming is all about. So Dota says, how, what kinds of exercise help us to reprogram our brain? Well, Dota, what is the current program you're running? Describe that, and then how would you like your brain to run? And then we can work on an exercise for that. Myself, you know, one of the exercises I'm working on is to replace useless thought so a great brain exercise is what I'm doing now, memorizing the Ribhu Gita, which is, you know, Chitameva Mahadosham, Chitameva Hi Balakaha, Chitameva Mahatmayam, Chitameva Mahanasat. I've got now five pages of this stuff, and that's the first one. And basically it's describing the mind as an unbehaved child. And, you know, how is it behaving? And is its behavior useful? And when you practice reminding yourself to ask that question to yourself when your mind is running around like mad not not really making any sense then uh, you start to actually not listen to your mind and those sounds might be there but you're reprogramming yourself by focusing on a very specific self-inquiry process to actually no longer pay attention to it and then ultimately it starts to get quieter and quieter and quieter. So that's one thing. Look up the Ripu Gita, read Evolving Beyond Thought. Probably want to start with Happiness Beyond Thought, which uh, looks like this. This is the this is the power pack right here, Evolving Beyond Thought and Happiness Beyond Thought. And what is so wonderful about these things is that later it is uh, there's Kala Triapi Tana Asti Sarvam Brahma Eti Kevalam and this follows a number of the original statements and it basically means not in any of the time periods. So, you know, you begin to focus on and practice focusing on the fact that the past doesn't exist, the future doesn't exist because it hasn't happened yet, and the present isn't even what you think it is because, you know, light is entering your eyes at a different time than the human brain can actually perceive it. So it's not really real, anything that's happening. And so in, in none of the three possible time periods is anything nearly as real as you think it is. And the more you concentrate on that, you train yourself to perceive the world that way, you know, it's, like, it's like Bruce Lee said, no ego, no enemy, right? And you, it doesn't mean that you don't have this part of your brain anymore that, does, that feels threatened or your ego you get your you know you get your knickers in a twist because something happens that doesn't exactly go away or at least it hasn't totally gone away for me yet but man it has far less of an impact than it than it used to and it's just simply by focusing on these powerful questions and these powerful ways of thinking about time and so forth now the cool thing is is if you read like Einstein and and Gödel in particular 
those dudes were basically trying to come at that conclusion from a different angle, that the past and the present and the future, don't, they don't really exist in the way that we think they do. Um, and the incompleteness theorem is a little bit different than what Einstein was talking about, but it's pretty exciting. And uh, <laughs> yeah, thumbs up to that. Thumbs up all around. Uh, if you're just joining us, hit that thumbs up. Let us know where you are in the world and ask your questions about memory and so forth. Um, and I want to catch up with these chats here. Don't want to, you know, if you, if you feel like I'm not responding to your chat, then maybe do some Ripu Gita chanting. But I hope that helps you, Dota. Physico says, uh, never Mr. Physico. If you, have, if you can't call me Anthony, it's Dr. Metivier, not Mr. <laughs> but uh, just Anthony will do. Um, never sir, never teacher, never sensei, never, never any of that stuff. Just Anthony will do. But if you must, if you must play the game of, of salutary uh, <laughs> greetings, let's make a doctor. Because that's just the way, the, that's the way of the world. And that's what they gave me when I was born on April 3rd, 2009, into the world of dudes who have PhDs. <laughs> All right, Physico says, can you give a brief explanation about the memory types? I think I know the juicy bits, but I want to be certain with a memory master. Oh, there are so many types of memory. Speaking of, you know, terms that academics come up to give each other and to give concepts, we'll be here all day, but the ones that we focus on, the ones that you're tapping into when you use memory techniques are your spatial mapping, your autobiographical memory, your figural memory, your episodic memory, and you're, by some uh, definitions, you're changing semantic information into episodic memory. Um, but you're also using procedural memory and you're using figural memory and you're using all these different kinds of memory. So if you pick one of those and you want to know more about it, I would suggest that you not, you know, um, romanticize any memory expert's uh, view on these things or any memory master, as you put it, but rather go and, go and use memory techniques and then study memory science, follow your interest in that and think about it scientifically and run experiments in your mind and, and, and just ask yourself, is this what they call autobiographical memory that's going on right now? Or is it actually episodic memory that just happens to involve autobiographical things? Or, you know, to what extent is this particular thing, like what was it we had six of spades and three of spades and four of diamonds, right? Well, in my imagery for that, what is procedural memory there and what is figural memory? And so I, th I think that you've got to compare actual practical research of the scientific terminology with your actual practice and then see for yourself what those things are in practice. And then you'll have so much more fun reading the memory science as I have by doing it in this way. All right, Sebastian is back. Okay, so Sebastian, you were asking about French, was it? If I remember correctly, because we had Time Lord uh, and then Dota had with accounting. We haven't gotten to the accounting thing, Dota. If you want to re, uh, <laughs> rephrase that question, um, but you basically were asking about 20 hours with, uh, I think you mentioned 20 hours. People are saying you got to practice this or that with uh, accounting. Look, if people put numbers on it and all that sort of stuff, what they're saying is that they don't know. <laughs> they, they, they're, they're doing they're doing some statistical analysis, some mathematical number crunching, crunching, and all that sort of stuff. What does it matter how many hours it took anybody else? What's gonna the only number you can actually measure and be certain of is the one that you tracked, right? For you. So here's the thing, and it's a real problem in the world, and it boils down to human. Well, let's not let's not. Uh, Let's not deride anybody, but um, it boils down to pretty much some nasty stuff that is just e cooked into the human brain for a variety of reasons that the Savannah hypo hypothesis probably answers better than I could. But, um, you know, there's just learned helplessness 
and the need for certainty, where people just want to know how long something will take. And then some Yahoo will say, well, that'll take 40 hours, or, you know, well, actually, you need 10,000 hours to mastery, and, oh, well, I read this book, and it's at 10,000 hours, blah, blah, blah. What a steaming pile of nonsense. The only number that matters is the number you create yourself based on diving in and resisting the need to know. If you need to know, just track it. Put on a clock and then look backwards, crunch the numbers and say, that took me 20 hours. That's the number that matters. That's the number that matters. Who cares about anybody else's number? You are absolutely shooting yourself in the foot and possibly the head if you're focused on what anybody else has done or can do in a particular amount of time when you just need to focus on yourself and the numbers you're producing, the data you're producing. And this is what all the top athletes do, is they don't get caught up in all this nonsense, they, except for the ones who want to beat a certain record, but they're not gonna worry about how many hours somebody else spent on it. They're gonna be worried about how they can shave off a second of time or a second uh, a gram of energy or whatever it is in order to beat a record based on their understanding of themselves. And many of them will have a good coach, a good coach that will sit there and help them do the tracking and help them be authentic and true to the production of the numbers that matter, which are your numbers, right? So don't get caught up in, uh, well, so-and-so so said 20 hours this, and yada who la di da in their book talked about 10,000 hours and all that stuff. It's all absolute, it's illusion that has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you. There are people who get things quicker than others, and it has to do with your level of competence when you enter the fray not just competence in the singular either but there are numbers of a number of levels of competence and then there's the need to gather competence as you go along and to gather awareness of competence so that you have a meta relationship to what it is you're doing so you can guide yourself correct yourself as you go it's all it is it's very very simple and there's a lot of messaging out there and it's getting worse and worse day after day telling people that, oh, information is too complex, we have to have two minute videos. Oh, information is too complex, we have to simplify our language. Oh, da, 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 da. that's not gonna help anybody. It's not gonna help anybody. Everybody needs to be challenged. Everybody needs to learn how to deal with being frustrated and everybody needs to learn how to stop listening to useless data that has nothing to do with you being in the game you wanna play and figuring out how to play it. Simple as that. So that's the thing to there. Um, Sebastian, French, talk to me. Tell me what it is that you need to know about French. And I will get into some of these other uh, chats here. Maybe you already did, and if I missed it, I apologize. Got lots of chats here. I will look through them. If you're just joining us, hit that thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world and how you're doing. So James says, born and bred in Canada. All right, that's great. Whereabouts? Uh, Harvinder says, thank you, Master. Oh, Anthony will do. I love to dive in regular practice for card repetition. Then I must have more questions. Great, well, bring them to the dojo. And if you want to join the dojo, go to magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash H, and we'll see you inside. Um, KSF says he's a beginner. Beginners are great. I'm a beginner too. Every time I pick up a piece of information I need to memorize, Zen mind, beginner's mind. There's no point in uh, using a beginner as an explanation or an excuse because all the master is gonna tell you is, great, keep being a beginner. That's where all the fun is. So Sebastian says, I am currently getting into studying body language and micro gestures. How could I memorize all, all this efficiently? Any tips on how to do this? Yes, so Sebastian, um, first thing is, is what are the terms? And memorize the terms and have a proper memory palace network that supports that amount of terms that you have carefully chosen and uh, start to memorize them and if you need uh, any more help then you know the dojo is the opportunity for you to actually submit your material if you need more guidance and have some accountability around it dota says guru brahma guru vishnu guru dev mahashora <laughs> great that sounds great that's a, I don't know that mantra, but it sounds cool. Let me know uh, more about what it means. Physico says, needs some help on remembering the signs from sign language. They don't stick well. That is a great reason to be in the dojo, so we can work on it, get it up on the screen, and uh, we, need to, we need to actually see it 
on a sign by sign basis. But Physico, if you don't have a full Memory Palace network, then uh, that's where I would start. Make sure you understand spatial memory and memorize some other things and uh, uh, you know, work from there. So Time Lord says, I do have the not card images down. For example, the Queen of Clubs is the genie from Aladdin, Robin Williams, Ace of Hearts is Weird Al in his fat music, music video. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I, I used to use um, the fat lady sings, but I changed it to that. <laughs> My issue is after the first car, when I get to the second car, the third and fourth car steering wheel or seat windows blend together, and I forget which card I put on which one and which one thing. I think it's because a steering wheel is just a steering wheel and I can't really decipher the differences. And the journey is front to back following your rules, if that makes sense. Okay, so are these actual real cars? Or are they invented cars? That's something to know. Let me know about that, Time Lord. Dota asks, how to make bizarre images? Well, first thing to do is to ask yourself, do they have to be bizarre? They're, it's not just about bizarre. It's also, do they hit the magnetic modes? So there are six in total, plus the seventh of space. And you want to make sure you're hitting as many of those. And you need to, you need to kind of understand where you are in your sensory preferences. So we do a lot of that training in the masterclass to help make sure that you are aware of that and able to test it through practice. So Physico says, I love to call people Mr. or Miss to people that I profoundly respect. It makes me feel good. <laughs> but doctor it is. Great, great, great. Um, yeah, well, uh, I mean, Mr. is just, just a strange one. I, it's not really my favorite word. Even if I weren't a, someone who has a PhD, I just, I just never liked the word Mr. I remember my friends calling my dad Mr. Metivier, and I thought it sounds so weird. And my dad would say, it's Bernie. Just simple. But I appreciate where you're coming from, Physico. Vibehav is here, says, help me in learning big lessons. Okay, what is it that's big and what are we talking about? Be specific, please. Uh, Dota says, thank you. Excellent, Dota. Thanks for being here. Iliasa is here. Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour. Comment ça va? Thomas says, should you draw out a complete scent of alphabetized memory palaces for starting to memorize vocabulary? Thomas, yes. If you really want to hit the ground running, make sure that is completed. I, I realize it can be a challenge, but it's actually the challenge that a lot of people need in order to actually have the memory resources working properly. Uh, and I just, uh, you know, I refuse to, to, to dumb this down because it is so essential and it is the secret to the success of all the people who, who do this and, you know, there's, there's great, great stories. I realize that not everybody's going to do what's required, but we, we need to actually tell the truth in order to get results. And so that's how you do it. Uh, you, you, you need it because it's going to unlock the autobiographical memory, the episodic memory, the figural memory, the, you know, all the levels of memory that you're actually going to need. And that's what this uh, exercise today is all about. So Parth says how to recall adequately. Well, Parth, that's a great question. Recall is one of the elements that some people need to focus on more than others in order to get it into long-term memory. So the great debate in the science, if you really dig down deep into the science, is uh, what do you need to do more, encode or decode, in order to get information into long-term memory? And that's kind of like the silly, how, many, how much time is this going to take question. Nobody knows. You have to figure out what your mnemonic style is and then figure out how much you need to encode and decode. And the chances are that most people need to spend more time on developing the skills of both. So Vibehav says, I'm not a fast learner, what should I do? Um, well, one of the things that you should do is do an assessment of what kind of learner you are. Make sure you understand your sensory preferences and your learning preferences, your hierarchy of you know, what you prefer to learn from and the kinds of things that you prefer to learn. And there's certainly some things that just go completely in, and there's some things that go 
in one ear and out the other, and you need to figure out what those things are and see what lessons you can learn from, uh, from the actual state of where you're at. And uh, if you want to join us in the dojo tomorrow, go to magneticmarymethod.com forward slash H. We can work a little bit more closely together on that. So Time Lord says it's real cars, a truck, an SUV, small SUV, and another truck. Okay, so let me see here. If you're confusing steering wheels between the two, there's a number of issues. Uh, one is, okay, so you know about the primacy and the recency effect, right? Well, one thing, one of the key problems that a lot of students have with memory is that they always start at the beginning and they don't actually follow the training. You need to start at the beginning, you need to start at the end, you need to start in the middle, you need to start randomly in order to actually maximize the primacy effect. So that could be one issue you're having. It's not that the cars aren't differentiated enough, it's that you actually are putting too much primacy on the beginning of the journey during recall rehearsal. If you do that, you're going to get you're going to have problems further down the line. That's why you always have to make sure you're starting from every end. So for example, the Sanskrit that I'm memorizing, this journey is getting longer and longer and longer, and in order to stop having primacy on the beginning of the journey, even though I start every day my chant in a particular place, I also need to make sure that I start it from different parts of the journey and from the end of the journey in, right? And essentially do it backwards. And, you know, you read the accounts of the old dudes who memorized entire books. And this is where I, this is, this is part of how I refined the practice uh, to, to help people the best, help myself the best, of course, uh, and then pass it on in the teaching, is because you read the old accounts of the dudes who are like, yeah, we can recite entire books from the top of our head, and we can recite them backwards. And I was like, how the heck are they doing that? Well, there's your answer. So um, give it a try. Make sure that you understand primacy and recency and you absolutely have total clarity with each and every station along your journey. And it, every station has primacy and recency to the maximum effect. And then the, the, you just can't fail. All right. So Physico says, doctor, it's because I love to call. Oh, we got that one. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, da, 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 da. James is in Toronto, Ontario. All oh, right, I love Toronto. I was there for a long time. I have many, many, many memory houses in Toronto, especially East York, round about Coxwell and Woodbine, and uh, the Danforth. Beautiful, beautiful territory. All right. Vibov says, what is the secret of casinos based on memory tricks? Well, I thought you were a slow learner and you wanted to deal with big topics. Um, why don't we worry about the secrets for doing that instead of casinos? I don't gamble myself and uh, it, it's a lot of card counting where you get a 2% advantage. Card counting does rely on memory, but the issue is that um, it's more about mental calculation plus memory and it's very, very specifically targeted at the game of uh, blackjack. I have no interest in it, actually. Um, my only interest really is memory techniques for poker, and I got what I needed from the wizards who use memory techniques in poker, but not for the purposes of playing poker, because I don't gamble. But pretty fascinating stuff you can learn from poker nemonists. Sebastian says, my question regarding French was how to memorize the vocabulary efficiently and permanently. I struggle with long-term memory. Great, so Sebastian, make sure you have a memory palace network, you understand all of this. If you want to memorize vocabulary permanently, then this is the fastest and most integral way to do it and really be able to count on it, be able to bet on it. So memory palace network, understand the bridging figure, understand the principles of primacy and recency effect and serial positioning and the recall rehearsal way of winding it all together for direct focus. Then you have the principles of predetermination and preparation so that you're actually working with words that you need in order to create the dopamine spikes that will urge you forward. That also, and this is theory, this is theory, I don't actually have the scientific research behind this, but I think it's true if we could afford the machines to test it, is that 
if you're, if you're feeding this properly, you're gonna get more nor, norepinephrine in the brain, which happens with novelty, which is also involved in the production of, uh, uh, of chemicals that are related to memory. So how you, how you hack novelty is really an individual thing, but we work on helping students do that. If you want to get into the dojo with the current special, go to magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash H and uh, we can help you a little bit further with that, but ultimately just, uh, just do these, actually make sure you have the memory palaces and organize the right words in the right ways and then follow up with the big five of language learning. So that's reading, writing, speaking, listening in a way that serves memory and then using your memory to read, write, speak, and listen in that language. So you were saying French, do that with that. And uh, you know Harbinder, he's in the dojo, and he uh, he he's doing French, and man, he's got so many memory palaces, unbelievable, and he's got creative ways of coming up with them too. It really is so fundamental to have your memory palaces mastered. Vibe says, "Thank you, sir." Oh well, there's that sir again. <laughs> May God bless you, Amen. Well, I, I I don't need blessings from any gods, but I do. Uh, I do appreciate your blessing from a fellow human being. That's great. Time Lord says, I do always start from the beginning. That, that's probably, you know, the issue. So give my suggestions a try. Uh, it's going to help uh, incredibly. You might find it a challenge in the beginning. That's very good. Don't give up. When you get frustrated, just scale back, and, but keep challenged. There's other things too, Time Lord. So if you're in the master class, go to the FAQ section look at the video on Chinese vocabulary where I talk about the pillar technique give that a try for cards as an alternative it's a lot of fun that's what I've been doing uh, for about a year now Parth says how can I make a memory palace to recall GK questions and answers I don't know what GK questions and answers are um, if you haven't taken the free course please go to magneticmerrymethod.com you'll see on the top there or in the drop down menu if you're on mobile a free course option and grab that or just uh, invest in yourself and in your future and in uh, in in this community quite frankly uh, and grab this at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash h and we'll see you in the dojo first thing tomorrow <laughs> sharp how to increase our long-term memory ask dota um well you, I'm not sure that one, I don't think we increase our long-term memory. What we do is we exercise our ability to get information into long-term memory so that it is, it, it is, it transcends short and long-term memory and it's in access. It's achievable. You're able to actually reach it. You're able to get what it is that you need, right? That's, that's, that's different. Um, so we need to, um, we need, to, we need to, to think about what we're trying to do. And long-term memory is not necessarily the goal. It is the ability to access the knowledge when we need it in the ways that we need it. That's better to focus on because the fancy terminology doesn't do that. It's the actual becoming a person of knowledge. And, you know, I was speaking with my friend Nick yesterday and, and we were talking about how that reading critical theory, reading criticism of, of different novels like Tolstoy, for example, is, is a way of increasing memory because you're adding and you're compounding details and so forth. So there's a, there's a sense in which the memory techniques are one world, but then there's also the memory technique of just generally continuing to create connections, right? So. It's not, it's, it's not always about uh, memory techniques. It's about memory techniques plus the big five, plus going and actually being a lifelong learner and spending time with that topic. So Parth clarifies, general knowledge is what GK means. So what kind of questions and answers would come up in general knowledge? I'm not, I'm not a great practitioner of uh, general knowledge. I'm not sure, uh, I, I don't, I'm not a generalist, you know? 
why would we want to go for general knowledge? What does that mean? Where is general knowledge in the world? What makes that a goal? And uh, is that really what you're talking about? <laughs> Dota says, long-term memory is a problem of mine, so give me the solution. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not, I, I really, uh, I, I would just go watch the replay of what I just said, because I'm not sure that long-term memory is anybody's problem. And if, it's, if it is a problem that you're making, then Bruce Lee, man, no ego, no enemy. Uh, there, the solution is right in front of you. Uh, it, it's what we talk about every time that we're on this chat together. So practice. Practice these techniques. If you haven't learned them yet, then you can't practice them. So learn them, then practice them. But don't make, don't make anything a problem. If you make it a problem, then that can take on a life of its own. But it's not a problem. Memory is not a problem. Memory is the solution. Always the solution, never a problem. James, living in New Brunswick. Oh, wow, my uncle lives there, one of them. And a uh, great, great part of the country. All right, so the Halloween exercise. Who wants this uh, Halloween exercise that, uh, that we're talking about? Give me a hell yeah in the chat. Hit the thumbs up if you're just joining us. And uh, keep your questions coming if you have questions. Let's try to get the questions specific. Let's not get all grabby like, give me the solution. Because uh, <laughs> you already have the solution. It's called learn the techniques, practice the techniques, implement them, and memorize information that improves your life so that you can improve the lives of others and make a perfect circle. But uh, don't make memory a problem. Okay, so Parth clarifies, GK for geography, governance, and current affairs. Okay, so let's pick one of those and, you know, figure out how to memorize it. First, start with the memory palace. Make sure you have a sufficient number of memory palaces and, uh, um, you know, get some specific information organized and put start encoding it in your memory palaces. So Time Lord says, hell yeah, we got one hell yeah. Dota says, is there any technique to make long-term memory hard? Well, we don't want our long-term memory to be hard. Um, I think I know what you mean, but uh, uh, <laughs> that's all we talk about, Dota. I don't know what, uh, what other technique that you're waiting for. Look, here's the thing that you need to understand. The reason I focus on the memory palace is because all memory techniques are memory palaces, right? The memory technique of any origin, of anything, is always spatial in nature. And so people, when they struggle with acronyms, when they struggle with the major, when they struggle with whatever memory techniques you can come up with, one of the main reasons they're struggling is because they don't understand spatial memory. They don't understand that all of it is spatial memory. Every single thing is spatial memory. And that's why they need, and I'm not giving you the tough love thing here because it makes me happy or it gives me some special joy, but it's because it's true. You need to master the memory palace because everything is the memory palace, everything. Now, memory palace is just a cute little word for spatial mnemonics or location-based mnemonics. All information is based in space, all of it. There is no information that is not spatial in nature. It's just not there, it doesn't happen. Even a concept is somewhere in space. It's in space in your chemical bath, or it's in space on a wall in an art gallery, or it's in space on a card, or it's in space in a book. And if you don't get that, if you don't understand that, you are never gonna get anywhere with memory techniques. At least not as fast and as furious as you could be by mastering the fundamentals of the memory palace and mastering it as quickly as possible without humming and hawing about it and uh, not diving in and doing what's necessary to be done. Or, you know, you can go visit Alice 
and, and, and just see how deep the rabbit hole goes, right? In getting nowhere and continuing to go in that direction. So this is the, this is the thing to understand. You need to master the memory palace because all information is in space. If you don't, if you don't have to take my word for it, read The Case for Mental Imagery by Stephen Costlin and start to unravel the real deal of what's really going on. Spend some time with the Magnetic Mary Method podcast. Look up all the episodes where I've uh, interviewed uh, with Nelson Dellis, with Brad Zupp, with Alex Mullen. John Graham's interview is coming up. He's the 2018 USA Memory Champion. And, and don't take my word for it, but challenge yourself and quit spinning your wheels. I mean, Time Lord here had, a, had exactly the best possible question that will only ever make sense to people who actually use memory palaces. And uh, I think he switched on and gets it, and now he can go and refine his practice. This is the kind of serious work that we do in the Magnetic Memory Method world, and I invite you to come and join us at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash H. Um, I don't think my forward slash is right here, is it? Here's how bad my memory is. I sometimes forget <laughs> that this, this darn screen is mirrored when I use my iPhone. My bad. I apologize. I'm human. There. Is that a forward slash? Yeah, that, I can't even tell anymore. Forward slash H. And that'll uh, enable you to join our discussions, uh, post your memory fallacies easily, and uh, have greater support from the community, greater interest from the people who are on the path, who get this, and are able to share a common lingo and, uh, you know, get to the head of what's really happening here because talking about memory techniques is not learning them through practice and applying them to information that will improve your life. They're fun, they're fascinating to talk about, but ultimately, Dota's saying, is there any memory technique to make long-term memory, you know, more stable is what I think you're trying to say there. And that's what we've been talking about every time that you've been on a live chat and it's all that I ever talk about and there, there's reasons why that I talk about it, and that's because that's what works. It's what works for any memory competitor, it's what works for any student, but the problem is is that we're not competing to memorize a bunch of cards and numbers that we're gonna forget at the end of the day. So I have gone and sopped up like a sponge everything from the competitors. They like me, they talk to me on the podcast. I think one of the reasons they like me is because I don't BS people and tell them you know nice goofy stuff like a lot of the other people out there do. Uh, we just get down to what actually works, what actually works. And that always begins and it always ends with the memory palace because all information is in space. All information is spatial in nature and so it'll be encoded in your brain in space. Basically the heavy duty science stuff that they sort of have figured out is that when information enters your eyes, for example, or your ears, it's like it's just splatter shot all over the brain. Not in every single little last quadrant, but all over the brain. And when you're using memory techniques, you know, um, like Physico is asking about, you know, the different kinds of memory. Well, you're putting an intervention there. It's like, it's like you're putting a canvas there and you're guiding some of that, just enough of that onto the canvas to make a meaningful picture for your brain to create neural networks. Or, better said, to use existing neural networks to attract magnetically that paint onto the canvas in a meaningful way so that, you know, you can think, oh, it was Garrett and he was in Illinois, right? Uh, that kind of thing, which would just be completely lost if you didn't put your canvas there to capture it and you didn't use magnetic imagery to stick it in place. That's the technique, Dota. That's it. And it is so powerful for those who actually learn how to do it. And you can learn how to do it. And I invite you to come and get more help at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash H. No pretty uh, outer space green screen stuff today. Just me on the porch, uh, enjoying. So, thanks everyone for being here. 
We got a hell yeah from Philip and a hell yeah from Time Lord. I guess that's enough. <laughs> Maybe we better wait for one more hell yeah. Can we get one more hell yeah from our small little crew of, uh, of memory enthusiasts? Dota, I really appreciate your questions, even if I have to come back with a bit of tough love on them, because uh, it's it's uh, an odd thing. We don't normally in, in, in life talk to each other in short sentences that I'm sure you're typing into mobile. <laughs> But uh, what a weird, what a weird world. What a wonderfully weird world. All right, so Will Henry says, yeah. Physico says, hell yeah. All right, we even, we've exceeded our expectation of at least three. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. As you're listening, if you have more questions, start piling them into the chat. If you're just joining us, hit the thumbs up. Let me know where you are in the world, what you're doing. If you're not subscribed to this channel, get subscribed. We have a lot of fun in this community. We don't take it too seriously. Sometimes I take it too seriously, <laughs> but I, I really enjoy. And here's what I want you to do for your Halloween memory exercise. Today it's Halloween in Australia. Um, it's Halloween for you, maybe, maybe later. Um, but uh, in any case, get a, piece, get a memory journal, dedicate a memory journal in whatever way is best for you um, and enable yourself and commit yourself to just completing this exercise. Don't think about it too much. Don't hum and haw about it too much. If you need the free course, go to magneticmerrymethod.com, register for the free course so that you're able to, uh, to know, understand more about what it makes a, an effective memory palace and get your memory journal going. And then what I want you to do, and it'll depend on different people, but all I want you to do on a fresh page is just write the word Halloween on the top. And then draw a line down the center of the page. In my case, I would start with preschool, then kindergarten, then grade one, then grade two, and I would go all the way up to 2009 in April, the 3rd of April, when I got my PhD. Now, you don't have to do it all at once. I'm kind of a maximalist. I like to go for gold. If I'm gonna do something, I'm going all the way to the top and abandoning course only later, if necessary. But uh, it is uh, very, very important to, to, go, to push yourself, to challenge yourself. Don't, don't, uh, don't give in to this, well, that sounds like a lot. I went, I went all the way to university, you know, to PhD land. And uh, so I got a lot to account for. So Halloween, line down the center, preschool, uh, kindergarten, grade one. If you only went to grade eight, then just go to grade eight. If you went only to high school, go to the end of high school. If you went to only to a BA, go to the end of the BA. And then put, I mean, you can do this different ways, but you can put the name of your teacher in that grade and then the Halloween costume you wore that year and just see how far you get. See how many names of teachers you can come up with and how many Halloween costumes you can come up with for that year. So that's part one. While you're doing this, in your memory journal, draw out the different memory palaces of the classrooms for each year. Don't get caught on anything. If grade three just doesn't come and you're not like, oh yeah, that was Mrs. Van Rysick and I was dressed as uh, Ernie that year, don't get caught up on it. Just go to the next one, go to the next one, go to the next one. Over the next couple of days, allow your mind to just ruminate over your selves of Halloween past, the different yous that appeared, you know? And there are a number of years where I didn't dress up at all, so, I'm still gonna do the exercise anyway though, because what I'm gonna do is like, can I think of anything related to Halloween that year, right? And just jot down some details, trigger what's there, and then create a memory palace. There will be a memory palace for each and every single one. There, there must be. If there isn't, then you need to challenge yourself and go back and just revisit it. Revisit it as often as you like, 
but you can use Halloween as a great catalyst, a great trigger for enabling you in a very systematic, chronological way to come up with oodles and oodles of memory palaces. And if you're willing to do that and you know how to create well-formed memory palaces, you are going to be so richly rewarded from the exercise itself for what it does for you and you're going to have more tools that we'll talk about in the dojo tomorrow. So if you want to join us, go to magneticmarymethod.com forward slash H, get involved in uh, the full training to uh, skip to the head of the line and, you know, do like Eldon Clem and memorize a thousand words in six weeks. Uh, do like Amanda Markham, memorize 200 words in 10 days. We've got Kevin uh, Richardson who's just got up to 30 kanji a day in Japanese. We've got all kinds all kinds of people, they just, they learn it, they do it, and it works. So decide to be one of them if you want, in whatever way is right for you, and it'll be a blast. So let me know if you have any questions about that exercise. It's very, very simple. Those who choose to do, choose to do it are going to have a wonderful time. Will says, happy Halloween. Oh, thanks for that, Will. Happy Halloween right back at you. Partha says, I'm kind of introvert, so I don't have that much memory palaces. Yeah, well, uh, I don't know what that means because there's a lot of bad science around introversion and a lot of people are convincing themselves that their introversion is a problem and it's some kind of disease that they should somehow not be able to go out and operate in the world. Nonsense. So introversion is really just that you need time alone to energize yourself. Extroversion means that you need to be around people to energize yourself. That's the real useful term there. And uh, so you maybe have a different issue. I don't, uh, I don't uh, judge you or anything like that, but really think about calling yourself an introvert because even if that term that I just gave or the definition that I just gave is true, so what? Why should that, why should that impede your ability to benefit from spatial memory? You also have other options, like you can, if you want, explore alternative ways, alternative means of, uh, of memory palaces. There's other ways to do it, but you know, you want to start from the fundamentals and tap out what you've got before you give up on, uh, you know, the account of introversion. So I really don't buy into that and I don't see why it stops you from going to libraries or cafes or restaurants or whatever. Physical says, can I, can you give us a little meta structure of a memory journal? I started your course, but I'm lost on how to do it. Maybe some useful questions to put on the journal and especially what to put in it. Well, that's great. Um, we can cover that. Uh, that's the kind of stuff we cover in the dojo for sure. Uh, and since you started, well, then hopefully we'll see you there tomorrow. Time Lord says, what happens if you had childhood trauma where you've blocked out a lot of those young years? Yeah, that's a great question, Time Lord. Um, you know, I have that myself. Uh, really uh, nightmare experiences <laughs> that, that have, have uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's so much blockage, but I just really don't have such profound memories. But the question is, has that blocked out your memory of the school building where you went, right? Um, has it actually blocked out architectural memory of what a building was like that you lived in? That's one thing to consider. That doesn't mean use them as memory palaces, but just has it blocked out actual spatial mapping that's existing in your head? If so, well then, maybe there's alternative exercises we can come up for with you. Maybe you mentioned that one of your vehicles was owned by your parents, right? Maybe that's the issue with your vehicle. I don't know. Uh, with that vehicle. You might want to consider that. So uh, that's one thing. You know, I was at one point uh, hospitalized and I had to stay there for a long time. I can't use that place as a memory palace. Um, I've healed a lot of that. And not, not nearly as suffering with uh, anger and all that sort of stuff from, from unnecessary hospitalization as I used to be. But uh, I, just, I just don't use it. <laughs> it's as simple as that. And I just go on, find other exercises to find more memory palaces, and uh, 
move on with life. Like it's just not the, that uh, essential to use every single possible thing that could be a memory palace. You don't have to use every single one. But one of the things to do here is, is to see if you can use this kind of mental exploration to let things go or to shift your perspective, shift how you feel, and maybe that will get back some of those areas or maybe you need to consider whether you actually want to do it at all and just let bygones be bygones and go to a new cafe, go to a restaurant you've never been to before, go to a movie theater that you don't normally go to, go check out the art gallery, uh, go buy flowers for somebody and uh, use the flower shop. There's no end to future memory palaces so you don't need to um, necessarily go into your past. Uh, but if you did want to, then I'm sure you could do a lot of healing, even if it doesn't wind up giving you a, a, an abundance of memory palaces. So those are things to consider. Um, and if you don't remember the houses or their layouts, well, you know you don't have to you don't have to push or strive in order to do so, unless that you're finding a benefit from striving to do so. It's always the challenge frustration curve. We want to challenge ourselves, but we don't want to challenge ourselves to the point of frustration. Because um, that's not going to help anybody, ever. So, Time Lord says, I'll try this exercise. Just start from the present and work my way back to the past to see where I stop. Excellent. That sounds great. Uh, and I'd love to see some of the Memory Palace drawings that you come up with uh, as, you, as you do, um, or anything you care to share. Because it's just a wonderful thing to do. and. Even now, like when I think about Halloween, I think of a girlfriend and it's like, oh shucks, darn, and you know, some bittersweet feelings come. I know it's not that dramatic, but it's still dramatic. It still, you know, play, plays its role, causes its effects, and you want to always focus on things that create energy instead of burning energy. And in this case, it doesn't really burn energy, but it doesn't really create any energy either. But it's cool because I think, man, what the heck? How did I ever wind up living in a city like that with, with a girl like her, <laughs> you know? And uh, it's just, uh, then I think, yeah, but it made sense and we had some good times. And now I'm thinking, I'm thinking right now, damn, there's so much of that place, I, that whole city I've never used as a memory palace that I feel completely neutral to that I could be using, right? So I'm shining this light of amazement all over the city and I bet you I could get 50 memory palaces out of this place. There is one that I've always used there. Um, well, I, there's more than one, but there's one in particular that I favored. But now I'm just thinking of little dates that we went on and, oh, the Dairy Queen. I've never used the Dairy Queen. Uh, you, you know, and then I think, well, do I want to use the Dairy Queen? Because they represent poison that's so bad for your brain and for memory. I don't think that I do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but now I have the option, right? And now I think that there was a health food store right around the corner there, and there was certainly a um, a a Sally Ann, like where they sold uh, used clothes, and that's a big place, and I, I remember its layout quite well. So it's just discovery upon discovery. And, you know, to ask for Physico, like, don't make it complicated. Don't make your memory journal complicated. Just get a, get a, a book. You know, and call it your memory journal, decorate it. I often don't decorate the outside. Um, I decorate something on the inside. I shared an image in the uh, in our dojo there the other day of a heavily decorated one um, to illustrate on the outside, but I don't normally do it. The uh, decorations are normally on the inside for me. And uh, yeah, don't, don't make it complicated. If you, if you want, you can also get something like the, uh, the mastery journal. And this is quite good. Um, it, it just has built-in stuff to follow. You don't even have to think about it. And there's a little bit of space for a memory palace to draw right up in the corner. It's beautiful. Actually, the Mastery Journal is not that great for drawing memory palaces, but the uh, Freedom Journal is great. Physico says, some help to increase short-term memory. I like to daydream vividly, but I forget day-to-day -day activities in the process. So, um, is the thing with short-term memory, right? Is, is that really the thing to focus on? 
uh, are we using the terminology effectively and what is it you're trying to do? If you're trying to memorize things on a day-to-day -day basis, then is that really what you want to use memory techniques for? It can be something that's interesting, but I think the faster and more meaningful path for developing better memory of day-to-day -day events would be journaling. Save the memory techniques for what they're great for, foreign language vocabulary and phrases, S new numbers of uh, your accounts and cards and dates of historical figures, you know, facts. If you want to remember more of your day and the things that happen, yes, you can do that. But is that really the highest possible level for creating a life that is better, right? If it is, great. I don't have any qualms for that. Create the memory palaces, create the imagery that will help you remember the details of the day and stick them in a memory palace. One thing that I've done, I don't do it right now, but it's been so great is, you know, it doesn't, doesn't particularly help remember more of the day, but rather it, at the time that I needed it, it got rid of the feeling of like, holy cow, the whole day is gone, where did it go? It was just to get a piece of paper and write down nine o'clock, name of task, end of the time. So did it for 15 minutes, 9.15. 9.16, name of task, 9.30. Uh, 9.30 break, 9.32. 9.32, read a book, whatever. And uh, then I'd look back at the end of the day and go, that's where the day went, right? No need to memorize any of it because it was just trivia. But it enabled me to actually get rid of that feeling of where the heck did the day go and feeling like a useless moron because I have no idea what I did all day. Um, and it, it, it was very, very useful as a tool during the time that I needed it. And showing up to the discipline, I did it long enough that I actually don't need to do it anymore. Um, but if I ever did, I would use that tool again because it was very, very powerful. So Garrett says, I deal with a lot of names in my job. How can I remember a large amount of names from people I don't actually meet at first? I may encounter these people in the future, so I need to remember them. Great. So what you need to do is you need to get the list of the names and you need to create the memory palaces to support the memorization of those names. And then you need to get them into long-term memory. Uh, basically using the procedures that uh, we were talking about with Time Lord. So that you'll find very, very useful. Um, if you look up the testimonial, uh, speaking of names, with Lee Escobar uh, on the YouTube channel here, we worked together in, uh, in private training to help him get to the head of the line with uh, a goal that he had of memorizing 300 names in advance of, uh, of showing up to talks. And not only did we want to remember all the names, we wanted to remember exactly where they were sat. And so he would have the floor plan of the place that they were going to be sitting. And, you know, using the major method, we would, we charted out a plan to not only be able to memorize the names, but the exact position in the room that they'd be seating and a strategy for tracking them if they moved and wound up sitting somewhere else. Um, so last I spoke with him, he got his goal was 300 names. He was uh, around 200 names. Um, so that was a great, great success for him, and I'm sure that I'm sure that when next time I hear him from him, he'll have reached his goal. Uh, but that was amazing. Myself, you know, it's the same sort of thing. I go and I memorize these names. I, I do a lot of talks here in Brisbane, and I go and then I end up seeing the people in the street a couple weeks later, or I go and give a, a same talk, and they're all seating and seated, sat in different places, and uh, I still, you know, know their names no matter where they're sitting. Um, there's, if you do this right, you don't actually need to remember where they were sitting, but uh, it, it's fun. And, and so I just did this last week and I was going in, you know, actually, and oh no, Edward was sitting there, but you told me that he was sitting in for Angela and, uh, <laughs> and, you know, just went through all the details and so forth and everybody gets a kick out of it. It's a sort of fun thing and it encourages people to go and learn these techniques for themselves because it's one of the most powerful things that you can do. So I hope that helps you, Garrett. And uh, 
If you want uh, some more guided assistance and the actual course on memorizing names, go ahead and grab this at magneticmarymethod.com forward slash H. Type that into your machine, or uh, if you're on my email list, follow the emails that have been going out the last couple of days. And uh, let me know if you have more questions around that. But basically, that's it. And you, you know, there is some practice involved. And if you can just get a list of that names, that's the perfect list of names to practice with. Because there, when you get it, you'll get these little dopamine spikes, and you'll be like, "Yeah, I know these names," and uh, it's going to feel really great. Uh, John Graham and I, we talked about uh, some of this uh, recently with some software where you can practice memorizing names. But we talked about the problems that that can create. The problems I have felt that it created for me and uh, it was very good what what uh, we talked about there and I love when I speak with the memory champions especially John Graham because he's done these memory challenges where he's not only remembering names but he's memorizing colors and numbers associated with these names of moving targets on live TV and uh, oh man I just tweeted a link to one of these and he's really, really great at it and it was great to talk to him about my fears of training for names with software and he was like, yeah, 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 no, if you want to do it with real, real people, then you've got to practice with real people in the real world because uh, they are two different skills. So if you're going to seek software to help you with name memorization, beware because it's not the same skill. Practicing to memorize names from software is different than practicing to memorize names for the real world. So there's lots, lots more. The course has a number of exercises. There, there's many ways to crack the nut. Uh, we work on the ones that will make the most sense for each individual person. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just one of the neatest things. It's the neatest things in the world. And when you to see the people's eyes when you've remembered their names, uh, like there's a woman named Sharon at the last place. And I was, <laughs> I just, I said, Sharon was your name, right? And she's just like, <gasps> you know, like breathless for that second. And I'm kind of desensitized because I do it so often. But I love when people have that reaction because it reminds me of just how miraculous it is to people who don't have that technique. And it's just amazing. It's beautiful. It's the beautiful thing. It's the most beautiful thing in the world, memory. So I highly recommend that you do everything you can to get proper training from someone you like and, and you trust and uh, who's the real deal. Uh, and they're, you know, they're, they're, they're out there. It just depends on you know, whether you're going to do what they, what they say. And uh, if you're not, then well, join the, join the masses. But if you want to you be an action taker and someone who makes a difference in your life and others, well, that's what we work on. And we would love to have you. All right, so Physico says he forgets things he's going to do today and then he daydreams and forgets things. And people call him and then daydreaming, forget to respond. And then you give some advice to uh, Garrett about using people themselves as memory palaces. Uh, great. Well, Physico, I think that if you want to remember things, like Darren Brown is an advocate of using memory palaces to memorize to-do lists, and he says that that helps him actually execute more. He said that in Tricks of the Mind, the book. I don't know if that's still true. I don't know if he'd still recommend it, but it's worth exploring, and I've certainly done it from time to time. So just use a memory palace to memorize your to-do list. You can index a memory palace using the major method against a clock, so you mentally progress along a number of stations that are categorized by hour. You can mind map by hour. Uh, if you've read the blog post I wrote on Mind Map Mastery, it goes into that. There's lots and lots of things that you can do. Uh, but, you know, I would, I would really prioritize uh, using, starting from a different basis, which is using memory palaces to tackle a large learning goal and then find the ways that, you know, you could create more focus from that experience. Um, so I would suggest that. Garrett says, I'm in the master class. I do very well with people I physically meet, but I have trouble categorizing people I don't meet. I'll watch Lee Escobar's testimonial mention. Thank you. Okay, Garrett, thank you for that. I understand a bit better. Um, so when you say that you have trouble categorizing the people you don't meet, how are you trying to categorize them? Um, 
there's probably a there's probably a, a, a solution and so I don't know if you're also in the mastermind if you're not and you'd like to be let me know um, but one thing is just to think about like if you're having troubles categorizing them how are you categorizing them uh, that's that's the first question because that might be an issue it it is kind of weird to memorize the names of people you haven't met but often the reason why that's weird is because of how we're approaching it and uh, yeah I just need to know more I did not need to know more details um, and more particulars but essentially it sounds a little bit like the challenge that Lee was having but we were able to solve it um, and it was it's uh, just a great thing for him so ah so Garrett says I just randomly put people in a memory pulse well that's not the magnetic memory method so um, you know one thing would be to do is if you have the masterclass maybe revisit that course and understand that when we're using mnemonics generally randomness can fly but I wouldn't bet on it anytime you have to bet on it that's what the magnetic memory method comes from it's coming from I have to sit in an exam I need to know the names and dates of a lot of philosophers and a lot of critical theorists and I need to know exactly what they said and I need to know a bunch of terminology like you know constructio pregnans and architectonic tautology and yada 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 and I gotta like I gotta nail this and I gotta have you know I gotta do it and so I need to build something that is bulletproof and so things cannot go into memory palaces randomly they have to go in very strategically and they have to reduce cognitive load at the same time because it doesn't work if it's frustrating and not fun <laughs> right and so how are we gonna do this and I sat there and I got out Thor's hammer and I just kept pounding at it doing more research asking the question if these old dudes in the ancient times could really do what they say they could how did they do it and how the heck did it evolve in the 21st century and or the 20th century at the time how did it evolve to being this kind of thing that people use at competitions to memorize stuff that they're just gonna forget there's got to be a meeting of this there's got to be a way that we can get the best of both worlds for learning right for information that matters that we want to keep like the names of people like complicated terminology like numbers and dates and facts and all this kind of stuff there's got to be a way and so the the debt to be paid is learning the techniques themselves but also learning the organization of information it's like Google <laughs> if you want to become a human Google then you have to organize information for search and this is this is exactly what what I worked on and solved and helped people do and it's that's actually the most challenging part but it's the most fun part too when you strategize and you think okay so I got all this information I know all this I know all this stuff already how am I gonna take what I already know and magnetically attach the information that I don't know to what I already know and it's gonna happen in only one way which is with some kind of strategy and it's the most and it, it's how buildings get built it's how businesses get founded it's how Google makes what we're doing right now possible in co in combination with YouTube it's how we found each other organization matters it is the ultimate memory tool organization of data and organization of data that increases the speed the potential for speed simply because of the optimization of the organization which is what proper well-formed memory palaces do to hit the ground running then you use the tools that only proper memory palace network formation ever will get you in terms of understanding that vast reservoir of available information like when I see a Garrett and I see Illinois I've already got all that stuff because I've practiced what we need to do this to, to make the associations if I want to memorize that right um, it's just and I do because it's you but you know the thing the thing that's really really important 
is that that is sort of off the cuff, on the fly, that sort of stuff. But if I knew in advance all the people that were going to show up on a live stream, then I would operate in a very different way in order to memorize it in advance, and that would require organization. So that's the thing to, to really think about. Random, random use of memory palaces is, is uh, great as a learning exercise, but it's not a long-term strategy and it's not a short-term strategy either. Um, so Garrett says, you're right. I really haven't put in the effort to make good memory palaces for those names. I'll focus on that. Awesome. I, 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 I love to hear more about your journey and you know, the training is there and I'm happy to say an encouraging word, but one of the best things to do is draw the memory palaces. Let me see it so I can, you know, say, Hey, you know what? That memory palace, maybe you could do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit less of that, so forth. That's one of the reasons to, you know, to make it easier in, uh, in the mastermind group is, you know, people post their memory palaces there. It's very fast and easy to pop a uh, video uh, walkthrough and uh, people love it. And, and there's just such a great community there. So that's an option, but you know, whatever it is, is, is these procedures didn't just come out of nowhere. They, they came out of hard won experience and my constant testing against what is known about the memory science to optimize it, and then working now with thousands of people to figure out and test and find op avenues for each person. And sometimes you gotta work with people individually, and uh, that means they, got, they, they have even more of an onus to meet you halfway by presenting what they're doing and making sure you're really creating the memory palaces properly and if you have struggles, well, what are those struggles, right? From the journey, not theoretically or, well, I just did it mentally. Um, there's a reason that we draw them. And that reason is something you will discover along the way. Uh, and sometimes there aren't really words and explanations for every little last reason, but it all bears out uh, in the science in the end. And it's just something that I love and adore uh, because of how profoundly well it works when people come to the art and the science and the craft of memory in the same way that going to the gym and just doing the movements cannot fail. A person can lack motivation and still do the movements and still build the muscles. doesn't require motivation. Motivation is not necessary. It helps but it's not necessary <laughs> it, it, and people chase after motivation but it shouldn't it shouldn't be the thing to chase after uh, just do it anyway I mean I know I I, 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 I risk sounding like Shia LaBeouf just do it <laughs> but uh, as wacky as that was there's truth in it there's truth in it and uh, believe me I have to do this to myself all the time uh, in my own in my own journey for the things I'm trying to do it's not sufficient to me to wait for motivation to memorize some more Sanskrit. Rather, it's that memorizing more Sanskrit creates the motivation for memorizing more Sanskrit. It's just, it's just kind of weird how it works, but I don't wait for motivation. Um, that's been a huge success secret, is not waiting for motivation. And I'm not saying you are waiting for it, but uh, just jam in here. Physical says, can you give me the link from those articles on the blog. I still sometimes struggle with English, uh, spoken English, reading is easier. So basically what I would suggest that you do is go to Google and search Magnetic Memory Method and Mind Map Mastery. And those, I can't type them into here right now, I'm sorry, because uh, I'm on the mobile, but uh, it really uh, is great when people search the site using Google, because it helps Google understand that, uh, hey, people want stuff from this site. So please uh, do that. And generally, if you're not already, get subscribed to the Magnetic Memory Method podcast. I know that you in particular are saying you're struggling with English, but it'll at least be a reminder because nearly every single episode has a written version. And then you can go, ah, bing, there's a new thing, and go to the site. Just click blog, you'll see all the new stuff, and uh, dive in and read and enjoy. Um, it's really, really uh, a powerful, powerful 
way of enabling yourself to, um, to learn week after week, pretty much. We just released a new one. Um, really had a lot of fun creating it for you all about the importance of practice, how to think about practice, how to create a practice regime for yourself. That's at the blog. Can't uh, easily pop this into chat for you because I, I can't pop it into chat at all when I'm on mobile. But it's called How to Practice Memory Techniques for Studying Tough Subjects. And I think you'll get a great deal out of that new offering on the Magnetic Memory Method blog and podcast. Click the share button, share it around with people, and uh, generally enjoy. It will give you the truth about what's really going to work for your memory. Yep, there it is. Brand new a blog post, fresh for the world. So let's see what else we got here. Um, yeah, that was the Halloween exercise, everybody. And uh, I really appreciate everybody being here today. And it's always a great opportunity to, to speak about memory. So blessed that we have this technology. It feels always so miraculous. But we also have older technology too, like cards and, uh, and notebooks, you know? We can do a lot with just something like this for our memory improvement. And so the exercise that I shared with you today, I think it's going to be tremendous for your success if you give it a whirl. If you missed it, go back, watch the replay, scrub through, and uh, we'll have more, more details on it um, tomorrow at magneticmoneymethod.com forward slash H. And if you... Uh, are already in the master class and need to upgrade to the master plan, just let me know by email and we'll get that sorted for you. Garrett says, thank you, Anthony. I greatly appreciate what you do. Thank you, Garrett. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you being here, being active in the chat. And, uh, and I really am very interested in, uh, in your goal and, and helping you organize better. So, you know, reach out with email and, uh, let me know, uh, one way or the other, how things are going. And, you know, it's, it's just the beautiful thing about all this is that all, the, all of the riches are in the action. And I've come to understand more and more and more about why that people are held back from taking action. But I haven't figured out yet more and more and more about how to get more people taking action and the actions that they need to take because um, I'm not sure... I'm not sure that it, that it can be done differently or better uh, because the reality is, is that people are crushed by uncertainty. We see this and, I, and, and it's because of memory actually. <laughs> it's so clear to me now, or at least it's clear to me in this moment, things may change. But uh, you know, reading Jordan Peterson's Maps of Meaning, which is a book on memory that you really ought to read, um, it's so clear that the real problem with people being held back from uncertainty is that they, uh, they're draining their memory resources by visualizing all of the potential things that could go wrong or won't go right. And that is making it impossible for them to use their, let's call it random access memory to work on their existing competence, which is the only thing that you ever have, is your existing competence, all of which lives in memory. All of which lives in memory. And I've realized that as stubborn as I am about the fundamentals, the reason why this works, the reason why I get to do this work at all, is because I'm willing to push people to just do what works based on your memory where it is right now, because I know and I've always known that that's all you have is what's in your memory right now. And it's all you're going to have tomorrow. And that's why everybody who wants anything in life better get to it. Because tomorrow can be a such better day than yesterday simply by inserting information in your memory that will improve your life. So I feel well on track. And I make mistakes and do strange, you know, odd things and yada 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 with uh, experiments on the internet and so forth 
to, to figure out how to reach more people with this very simple message. But you need to study these techniques, you need to implement them, and you need to practice them with information that improves your life. And you need to get over any mental hurdles that you're placing in your own path because those are in your memory. And because they're in your memory, they can be changed, they can be massaged, they can be sorted, they can be sifted, they can be screened out and replaced with better things. So, you know, Dota asked earlier today about how you could reprogram your mind. And this is a great thing. And I, you know, I didn't, I, I'm not in desperate need of this, but I think many people are in desperate need of some of the things that are at the back of this book. And essentially, these self-inquiry questions are so powerful. They've helped me so much and in, in ways where I didn't even realize I needed the help. But it just begins, are my thoughts useful? How do they behave, right? And then it says, um, uh, it asks you to think just how, how unreal are my thoughts? And, and it just goes from there and you go into this wonderful thing and because you're doing it in Sanskrit and English at the same time and you're really focusing on this, it's a real fast path to improving your life day after day just by coming from the other angle. So instead of adding something new, some new knowledge to make your life better, you're adding a question that helps you eliminate useless knowledge or useless energy that comes into the ideas like, you know, oh my God, this faux pas came out of my mouth. I should have said that better. You just instantly have a tool to erase it erase it from your mind, which erases suffering and it frees up your memory, your random access memory, so to speak, to pay better attention to the present moment and to milk it for all it's worth. Because you'd better milk it now because there is no other moment coming. It's always now, right? So really, really uh, feel like I'm, I'm doing the right things. So Physico says, Happy Halloween, I'm pumped for the next one. Next Halloween is coming, we'll, we'll try to be here. I uh, don't know where in the world I'll be, but uh, try to be somewhere on the internet talking to people like you. Time Lord says, this live stream has been extremely helpful. Thank you, Time Lord. You have been one of the core reasons that it's been helpful to others, and I appreciate you uh, asking great questions. And uh, Physico says, thank you. Time Lord says, lots of diamonds in this stream. Oh, well, think gems, I guess. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, Garrett says, do and others will follow. Great, great, great. And Garrett loves Jordan Peterson. Thumbs up to Jordan. Maybe it's the Canadian in us. <laughs> We've been through so much cold that we ha we're always warming ourselves up. And we can't, we can't uh, do anything but look at the cold with belligerence. Mr. Space says, hello, thank you for helping me go through my memory improvement journey. Well, thank you, Mr. Space. Great to see you here and your emails recently. Thank you for that. Uh, Physical says, Jordan Peterson is a boss. Yes, indeed. James says, as always, thank you for all you do, Anthony. Much appreciated. Thank you, James. Great to be here and I hope all things are all well in uh, New Brunswick. It must be getting late there, um, but that's great to know. And uh, well, what can I say? What's coming up next? We've got more blogs and podcasts and videos for the channel coming up soon. Always appreciate you guys hitting that thumbs up. Share this material around with, uh, with your friends. The more people who are in our community, the better discussions that we can have. And uh, sometimes the more tough love we can spread around, uh, which is necessary. And the more that we have cool, cool angles to, to talk about, Obviously, go to magneticmerrymethod.com. Take that free course if you haven't already. But if you just want to dive in and grab the dojo, go to magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash H. That'll direct you on over there to the current uh, opening. And I look forward to seeing the dojo members tomorrow. And one of the cool things about it, you know, I just see, uh, I see the accountability post for this week and people diving in, reporting on, uh, reporting on, what they did and uh, wow, some great things happening. So beautiful, beautiful mind map coming in there, the mind map and the memory palace combination from Yurgalem who uh, used memory palaces and mind map in collaboration to uh, 
to achieve a goal for the week. Amazing, amazing. So take action, take action, take action. And try to suppress any, you know, kind of, like it's just memory palaces, right? And it's just memory techniques. So try to suppress any sort of like, is this right? Or can I do this? And all that sort of stuff. It's not driving, you know, one of Time Lord's SUVs without a license. You know, you're not gonna get caught by the memory police for uh, doing the memory palace the wrong way or anything like this. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. You don't need permission to try different things. You want to try different things and you wanna do it in a spirit of play, a spirit of fun. Don't put frustration around it. Just relax, relax. And all the inner resources you need are already there because again, you don't have to take my word for it, read maps of meaning. Everybody has an existing level of competence. All I've been teaching for years, long before I ever read Maps of Meaning, is helping people find their existing level of mental competence, mental imagery that they already have, of varying kinds, and then put some strategy around finding out more about what, the, what is there, and then memorizing stuff that's actually gonna improve. In, and if it's a language, what's the 20% of the vocabulary that's actually gonna get you somewhere? People come to me and they're like, but what about the zillions of words? Who cares about the zillions of words? You don't even know the zillions of words in your own mother tongue. And you're already worried about a bunch of words that nobody even knows in the language uh, that you're learning. What about the 20% of the first thousand words or the 20% of the first 1,000 words or the 20% of the first 100 words? Don't focus on a bunch of stuff where you haven't even got there yet. Focus on just what's in front of you. If you're gonna climb a mountain, you're gonna fall if you stare at the peak but if you gauge the peak and you focus on the next place your hand has to go, you will get there and you won't fall and you'll have a great time doing it because you'll be in the moment. That's it. That's all you got to do. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So thanks everybody for being here today. Had a blast. Come and join me in the dojo at magneticmarymethod.com forward slash H. And uh, yeah, next time, hopefully our stream won't break, but Let's all put together our goodwill wishes. Maybe say a little magnetic prayer for YouTube and Google that they uh, do whatever it takes to keep the internet cool and not give in to corporate interests and start doing all kinds of weird things that have been going on the last, well, since the beginning, I guess. <laughs> but, but, you know, the, the greatest thing is is that the creators of content on YouTube made YouTube. They made it, you know? And some of it's just goofy stuff that's fun to watch, some of it's education-based, and it's this grand bazaar of everything under the sun. And when <laughs> giant brands are getting their knickers in a twist because humans are creating things for other humans that they enjoy, that takes a bit of life's pain away, you know? They're gonna ruin it all. Griping over, over uh, Coca-Cola ads. <laughs> because Coca-Cola can't handle advertising their, their precious poison on, uh, on PewDiePie videos. I mean, what kind of insanity have we, have we gotten ourselves into? Well, I'll tell you. We've gotten ourselves into the same insanity that's always been going on since the beginning of, of uh, territorial battles over, over a world that nobody, nobody owns, nobody can own, nobody ever will own. And they are just endangering a moment in history where humans found out how to talk to each other around the world in real time about really cool things. And they're gonna bust it apart so that people don't get hurt, their feelings hurt, uh, while watching Coca-Cola ads or whatever. Really, really, really perilous times. So if you care about any creator's content on YouTube, show your support. Even if it's just as fickle as thumbs up, guys, 
hit them. The robots are listening. <laughs> and leave your comments, real comments, meaningful comments. And make, it, make your own channel, you know? Do cool things for people. It's not so hard. And help this, help this survive. It's a really cool, cool, neat, miraculous thing. I would have killed for this when I was in university to be able to find people, I don't know if anybody actually does this, but doing live streams about like philosophy, like if, if Jordan Peterson had been doing this on YouTube when I was in university, that would have been amazing. It would have made, made uh, so many great things. And that, that was the equivalent back then in the form of the teaching company and uh, uh, now they're called the great courses. I don't think the great courses are nearly as great as they used to be because, you know, before things get too corporate-y and there, there aren't people getting their feelings hurt and uh, they're worried about um, their, their timeshare lofts in whatever place, um, they used to have guys on there who would teach, like really teach. Rick Roderick, for example. That dude that dude like was the real deal and you can still find his stuff on YouTube and he didn't care you know uh, about anything <laughs> really he just cared about the truth and he spoke and he 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 died as we do um, but you know he was sort of filtered out as far as I can tell from the the teaching company because he was just a little bit too raw a little bit too too in your face too direct too devoted to the actual things that the actual texts actually say. And uh, it's, it's pretty sad that, that we have to have these battles, but yet we've always been having them in one form or another, haven't we? Uh, there's a great book you should read called Just Being Difficult, and uh, I think you'll find that rewarding if you care about intellectual matters. And, uh, <laughs> Speaking of intellectual matters, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go read some intellectual books. So, thanks everybody for being here. And again, if you want to do some memory training in dojo, come vote, join us at magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash h. And uh, have a great one, everybody. Really appreciate being able to do some memory training today. And until we have a chance to speak again, keep yourself magnetic. Bye bye.